So you want to use movie clips in your YouTube videos. Yep. But you don't want to have issues with copyright. Yeah, that. Let's not do that one. If your channel is monetized and you get a copyright claim or strike, that means you're not making any money on your videos. So it's understandable that this is a problem most people want to avoid. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to be able to use movie clips in your videos while avoiding copyright issues altogether. And first, we're gonna talk about the difference between a copyright claim and a copyright strike. And then I'm gonna show you exactly what I do in detail when making my videos to avoid copyright issues on my content. All right, let's get started by talking about the difference between a claim and a strike. Basically, a strike is when someone files a legal claim against your channel for using their copyrighted material. So say you upload an entire movie to YouTube or you play a popular song in its entirety without permission. You're going to get a copyright strike and likely have your video taken down. So use common sense and don't do things like that. You're only allowed three strikes before YouTube will just remove your channel from the platform. So a strike is definitely worse than a claim. So what is a claim? Well, I can tell you because I've had a few on my channel and they're far less scary. Most often, YouTube's automated content ID system will automatically find and tag copyrighted material in your videos during the upload process. When this happens, they take one of three actions. They'll take the video down, they'll pass ad revenue onto the copyright owner, or they'll just track views or metrics on your video. In my own experience, I've only had the first two things happen. They take a video down or they give the ad revenue to the copyright owner. But that was a long time ago and I figured out a much better way to go about this, resulting in no more content claims on my channel. Speaking of my channel, if you find this video helpful, be sure to subscribe and help us hit that next big subscriber milestone. One more thing before we get into the nuts and bolts tutorial, there is a technicality in this space called fair use, which allows for the use of copyrighted material for things like reviews, commentary, and criticism, specifically in the United States and the EU. So you may need to look into your local laws if you fall outside of these areas. Now, YouTube will allow you to dispute claims that you feel would fall under fair use, but I've been down that path multiple times, and even if your content falls under fair use, the content owner can still reject your dispute, which is exactly what happened to me on this F9 movie review. And once your dispute has been rejected, there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. So trust me when I say you just want to avoid this altogether. Now, let's talk about exactly how to do that. Your first and best option if you want to avoid copyright issues is to just find still images online of the movie or TV show you're talking about, and then use your editing software to zoom in and out of them or pan across them so that you get that movement in your video without using actual clips. You can find plenty of images online to use in your content, and this is something I do to this day in pretty much every video that I make. And I do usually end up mixing in short clips with my images, which we'll get into here in just a moment. If you have access to the film or TV show that you're discussing, you can just take screenshots on your computer as well. That's another great way to gather images, and that is what I do in all of my TV show recaps. I've never once had a claim on a video where I'm using this method, so if you want to be super sure that you're not going to have any copyright issues, you can use this approach as opposed to using clips. That said, I do like to use clips in my content, and I have found the sweet spot for the right lengths of clips to use and exactly how to position them in your videos to keep you out of trouble. So when I'm using clips in my videos, I aim to keep them less than 15 seconds in length. Anything longer than that, I have found that YouTube's content ID system does a really good job of picking up on it and automatically applying a claim to my videos. If you can keep it at 10 to 13 seconds or less, you should be in the clear. Now, as I move into my tutorial here, I am gonna use a clip that I found, and I do have a lot of people asking me where I get my movie clips, and the answer is quite simple. Go to YouTube and search for the movie or TV show you're working on. You'll find at least one trailer, usually more, and what you'll do is copy the URL and go to a site like this to download the video. Once you've downloaded the trailers, you'll bring them into your editing software of choice, which for me is DaVinci Resolve, but no matter what software you're using, this process will be the same. What I like to do first is cut out all of the text like coming soon or who directed the film and just have the clips themselves. If you have a long clip, I definitely recommend cutting it up into shorter clips and pro tip, rearrange them in order to avoid YouTube auto flagging your video. 
I actually found that I can take a 15 or even 30 second clip and cut it into smaller chunks and then rearrange it from the original way that it was positioned in the trailer. And that will typically get me around YouTube's content ID system. I won't say this works every time, but I've had pretty good luck with it. You should know that including the audio from the clips pretty significantly increases the likelihood that there will be a copyright claim on your video. A lot of movie trailers or TV show commercials use copyrighted music in the background and YouTube is really good about finding that copyrighted music. So I personally rarely ever use the audio from the clips. Let's say I'm doing a review for this John Woo film, Silent Night. I've downloaded the trailers and brought them into DaVinci Resolve, and I cut out all the text so I'm just left with the clips of the film. Over here I have my intro, and in this section I'm giving a quick summary of the film, including details like cast and crew. I usually use these sections for my clips, so I'll drag those on top of my other tracks so that's what will be seen in the video. I'll mute the audio so you can hear my voiceover, and voila! I have my intro with the clip ready to go. All right, in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing John Woo's new film, Silent Night, which a lot of people are calling a stinker, but I think there might be more here than meets the eye. Directed by John Woo and starring Joel Kinnaman, a tormented father witnesses his young son die when caught in a gang's crossfire on Christmas Eve. While recovering from a wound that costs him his voice, he makes vengeance his life's mission and embarks on a punishing training regimen in order to avenge his son's death. So for the rest of the video, if I wanted to use any other assets from the movie, I would personally go with still images, although you could take little five second clips and put those on top of your voiceover. But I find that that gets really repetitive. And like for me as a viewer, I don't like watching a video where I'm watching the same clips over and over and over again. I like to see those still images and I don't see the same image twice throughout the whole video. So that's why I go about it the way I do. So I've got some still images here. I didn't grab a lot for the purpose of keeping this video concise, but I'll show you how I bring those in and edit them in my videos. I drag all my images into my editing software and add them onto the timeline. Then I do a nice little transition into and out of the image and then I add movement, usually doing a slow zoom in or out with dynamic zoom here in DaVinci Resolve. Or sometimes I'll keyframe it and pan across the image, but usually I'm doing the dynamic zoom because it's just easier. In my opinion, adding this movement to the still images is a better experience for the viewer. I've watched some videos where a movie reviewer will just put still images for like 10 minutes in their video and the, the images don't move and I get kind of bored with that. It's kind of a psychological hack to have the zoom happening and the panning happening and I feel like I'm still watching a video and not just looking at pictures. Okay, once you're done editing, you'll export and upload to YouTube and let it run its checks. For my first one, I've intentionally uploaded one with a 30 second uncut clip of a movie trailer so you can see what YouTube's content ID automatic check looks like. When this happens, YouTube will offer you the option to cut out that part of the video in their editor or even mute it if the copyright issue is related to music. But those options don't work for me because the video just wouldn't make sense if it randomly cut off or had muted sections in the middle of it. So in this case, I would delete the video and go back to my editor, trim up the clips or reduce them down to a shorter time frame, and then re-upload and make sure that you pass the checks. Now, just because YouTube's automatic system doesn't detect copyright issues, that doesn't mean you're in the clear. I have had times where I've uploaded a video, YouTube said I was good to go, and my video was up for a couple days making money, and then the movie studio will swoop in and apply a copyright claim to my video. In those cases, I chose to dispute the claims, and in almost every case, my disputes go through and I'm released from the copyright claim and I can go back to making money on my videos. There are some studios out there that will reject every dispute that you do, and it's incredibly frustrating because this content does fall under fair use. I'm doing a review or I'm critiquing their movie. That is literally defined under fair use, but unfortunately, this is just how it works, and I've personally chosen not to let it ruin my day. If it happens, I just move on. So in the F9 video, I disputed the copyright claim and it was rejected, but as opposed to like taking the video down, trying to re-edit it, work through all that, I just left, I just moved on to my next project. I wasn't gonna get all worked up about it or spend a lot more time on it. I just moved on. All right, if you watched this entire video and you still have questions, drop them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If there's anything else you'd like to know about my video creation process, let me know and I can make more videos like this. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.